So, hi everybody. Today we have a defense of Miami Gamfu Ashante Minister. Uh, the topic of the presentation is uh, automatic noise and artifacts removal from biomedical signals and images using tensor completion. Uh, now, according to the procedure, let me uh, introduce the jury member and the candidate. So, First of all, uh, I am uh, jury chair. I am full professor, director of Skoltech Applied AI Center. I was graduated from Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology in 2006. In 2008, I uh, got a candidate of science degree uh, from Institute of uh, for Trans Information Transmission Problems. Uh, and uh, uh, then I worked there for some years as a head of a lab. So we were doing uh, various uh, uh, methods of machine learning for industrial engineering. Then I moved to Skoltech. In Skoltech, uh, I was leading a big research group uh, devoted, uh, and we were uh, doing uh, methods uh, for 3D computer vision, uh, predictive modeling. Uh, and now I am the head of the center, and so we continue our work in uh, applying machine learning for industrial engineering, uh, medical imaging, uh, and uh, various other fields like oil and gas. Uh, uh, the second ju jury member is a uh, professor of the practice. Uh, he is uh, uh, from also Center uh, of uh, Applied uh, AI uh, of Skoltech, Professor Alexander Bernstein. Uh, he received his master's degree in mathematics in the uh, 1970s uh, uh, from the Department of Mechanics and Mathematics of Moscow State University. Uh, he uh, started his career at the Research Institute of Automatic Equipment in uh, 1969. Uh, so, uh, Professor Bernstein is uh, super qualified and experienced in terms of mathematical modeling and uh, usage of uh, statistics, uh, mathematical modeling, machine learning for uh, data processing uh, and data analysis. Uh, and uh, currently, uh, he is working uh, in uh, Skoltech Applied AI Center and uh, he's developing uh, procedures uh, uh, based on machine learning for processing of MRI data uh, for detection of various uh, for detection of various anomalies uh, like epilepsy uh, and other brain disease. Uh, the, third uh, the third jury member is uh, Professor Maxim Rahuba. Uh, he is from Higher School of Economics. Uh, he received his bachelor and master degree in applied mathematics from MIPT. Uh, he, defended, uh, he defended his PhD dissertation at the Marchuk Institute of Numerical Mathematics in uh, 2017. Uh, so he's a, a very good specialist in uh, tensor methods for solving high-dimensional partial eigenvalue problems. Uh, in uh, the period from uh, 2018 to 2020, he worked as a postdoctoral research at uh, uh, ETH uh, Zurich. Currently, he's an associate professor at the Computer Science Department of HSE University. Uh, he has a very broad expertise in machine learning, numerical data analysis, and the uh, application of tensor methods for uh, modeling of uh, multidimensional data. Uh, the second, uh, the, the, the next jury member is uh, Professor Wei Ping Li. Uh, he is from University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. Uh, he received his bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering and PhD degree in information and communication engineering from the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China in 2006 and 2011, respectively. Uh, he was a research engineer at the Huawei Technologies China. From 2011 to 2014, he was a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Leuven, Belgium. Since 2014, he has been an associate professor with uh, uh, UESTC Chengdu. His research interests include compressive sensing, tensor signal processing, and deep networks. Uh, so he uh, has a lot of uh, very highly ranked uh, papers. Uh, in uh, various IEEE journals. Uh, he's a IEEE senior member, a member of the Multimedia Technology Technical Committee of the Chinese Computer Federation, and a member of the China Society of Image and Graphics of uh, Youth Working Committee. Um, and uh, the next uh, jury member is a Professor Kui Bin Zhao uh, from uh, Rikian Center for Advanced Intelligent Project. Uh, he received his PhD degree in computer science from Shanghai uh, Jiao Tong University in Shanghai, China in two, uh, 2009. From 2009 to 2017, he was a research scientist with the Riken Brain Science Institute, Wako, Japan. 
He is currently a unit leader of Tensor Learning Unit with uh, Rikin Center for Advanced Intelligence Project, Tokyo, Japan. Professor Zhao uh, is also a visiting professor with the uh, Saitama Institute of Technology uh, in Japan, and also uh, he is a visiting associate professor with the Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. He has authored or co-authored more than uh, 100 papers in international journals and conferences and two monographs. His research interests include machine learning, tensor factorization, and tensor networks and computer vision. He serves as an editorial board member for Science China Technological Sciences. Uh, the next uh, jury member is uh, Professor Tsai Zhao. Uh, he is from University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. He received his master's degree from uh, the, this university in uh, 2009. In 2012, he received his PhD degree in applied mathematics from the same university. From 2013 to 2014, he worked with Professor Michael N uh, Ng uh, as a postdoc at Hong Kong Baptist University. From 2016 to 2017, he worked as a visiting scholar uh, at Instituto Superior Tecnico, University of Lisbon, Lisbon, Portugal. His research interests include image processing, hyperspectral imaging, machine learning, and scientific computing. He has authored or co-authored uh, many papers. Uh, he is a reviewer of uh, top conferences and journals, including CVPR, ICCV, and others, and uh, as well as uh, journals like uh, ACM Journal on Scientific Computing, ACM Transactions on Intelligent Systems and Technology, and others. And supervisor is a well-known uh, Professor Andrzej Chikotsky. Uh, he is the head of the Laboratory of Tensor Networks and Deep Learning for Data Mining, full professor. Um, well, I, I guess everybody knows Professor Chikotsky, so he contributed to various areas, including uh, signal processing, tensor decomposition applications for medical data processing, uh, and very, very super high-ranked uh, uh, scientist. And uh, PhD candidate, Maya Miashante Mensa, uh, Mensa received her bachelor's degree in information technology from the University of Cape Coast, Ghana, in uh, 2011, and a Master of Engineering in Computer Science uh, degree from the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China in 2017. From 2013 to 2015, she worked at the University of Cape Coast as a research assistant. Her current research interests include tensor completion, uh, deep learning, and randomized algorithms for multilinear algebra. So, in total, uh, we have very respective, uh, uh, very respectful uh, jury members uh, who are um, uh, specialists in uh, data mining, medical image processing, tensor decomposition, signal decomposition. So, these are all areas uh, uh, which, uh, uh, which somehow uh, intersect with the topic of the dissertation. So, the jury members can really evaluate the uh, the, 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 the dissertation. So, uh, uh, now the second uh, step of our uh, uh, defense procedure. Uh, uh, Miami, we expect your presentation. You have 40 minutes uh, for your talk. Okay, so please continue. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning to all the jury members. My name is Mami Jane Fuasans Mensa. And my PhD topic is on automatic noise and artifact removal from biomedical signals and images using tensor completion. And my supervisor is Professor Andrzej Chukowski. So in this presentation, I would be talking on my achievements in the past years in terms of publication. And then I would talk on the problem that I'm trying to solve and whereby I would talk on three proposed methods and then I will provide a general um, conclusion to all these methods. In terms of publications, I have, uh, we have been able to um, publish um, five papers and just about a few days ago, our um, recent paper on image reconstruction using superpixel clustering also got accepted in Signal and Processing Journal Elsevier. In this presentation, I would talk on um, fast cross tensor approximation, which would be part of the second method that I'll talk about. Um, this um, paper was published in, also in signal processing um, this May. And then in my third method, in my first method, I will be talking on the third publication. I'll be talking on the third publication, which is metrics and tensor completion using um, tensor ring with sparse representation. 
So to start, tensor completion actually is an extension of uh, metrics completion. In, in, the early, um, in the early works of tensor decomposition, tensor completion um, was seen as a byproduct of reconstructing um, images or filling images whilst performing the tensor decomposition tax. But due to certain constraints of the data and certain difficulties, tensor completion has been able to stand on its own as a procedure for imputing missing pixels in, in data. And the um, problem is solved using this optimization function where the pro P, P, P omega is the projection of the observed data onto the reconstructed um, image or data. And generally, this optimization function can also be, re, um, be reformed in various ways where we can have some form of regularization being added to it. Tensor completion has found uh, many uses in recommender systems where we have some user information and then we try to um, recommend or we try to project what uh, the, the user would try to um, buy or use. It has also found um, applications in time series, imaging painting, and then video completion. Therefore, the problem that I'm trying to solve, or I solved, is the removal of artifacts from images and videos, especially for MRI and EEG using tensor completion. However, um, in current um, methods, some of the pros and cons is that most existing methods are quite efficient, but computationally expensive. Also, other methods that are computationally light produce um, poor quality um, um, reconstructions. And most tensor completion algorithms are also only suitable for one type of corruption, such as randomly distributed. When it comes to um, corruption of data where we have structural or multiple slices or multiple um, rows missing, some tensor completion algorithms are not able to reconstruct it. Therefore, these are some of the challenges that I'll be trying to solve or look at in our work. So to start with my first method, I'll be looking at op an optimization method, exploiting sparsity and dictionary learning using TensorRing. And the motivation for this method is that we want to propose an efficient method, effective for reconstructing um, data with structurally missing information. And the procedure should be able to work with structural missing data or incomplete missing slices. And we provide a, a hankalization approach which gives us an ability to increase the dimensions or the mode of the tensor in order for our tensor composition or our tensor completion to be effective. And we investigate the use of sparse constraint on our cost ten tensor and use a, a dictionary learning approach for our tensor in completion. Okay, to begin with, um, in, in graph notation, a vector or a matrix can be re represented by a node and one leg or a node and two legs where the node represents the data and the leg represents the mode respectively. So in the matrix case, we have a node with two legs where this, the mode rep represents the, uh, where the legs represent the mode of the, the data. Likewise, we can have for third order tenses and fourth order um, tenses. In terms of metrics, um, in terms of tensor completion, there are various operations that are performed on the um, data before the tensor completion takes place. Some of these um, operations are matricization, whereby a third order tensor is reshaped or transformed into a, a matrix for, our, for the tensor completion algorithm to be able to work. We also have vectorization, vectorization operation where we transform a third order tensor, a fourth order tensor into a, a vector. And then we have tensorization approach where we transform the data into higher order, fourth order to sixth order tensors. And these operations are sometimes necessary for the tensor completion algorithm. Okay, so for our method, one of um, the tensorization approach we used is the Hankel folding or the Hankelization approach. Um, 
One popular Hankel folding approach is called the delay embedding transform, and which was proposed by Yokota. And in, in delay embedding transform, we have single way and multi way delay embedding. In single way delay embedding, our data, in this case, matrix, is multiplied, is multiplied by a duplication matrix in, in just one mode. And this produces a third order tensor where the symbol tau represents the window size that we are trying to, um, to use for the, the, the hankelization. A duplication matrix is basically a diagonal matrix which is also made up of several identity matrices on the diagonal. And multi-way delay embedding on the, on the other hand multiplies the data, in this case a, a matrix, by several um, duplication matrices depending on the size of the data. And this multi-way delay embedding would be able to produce either fourth order to fifth order or sixth order tensors depending on the size or the mode of our, of our data. However, in this picture, we have just a matrix, so it will be able to produce a fourth order um, tensor. The inverse operation for multi-way embedding is just an, an unfolding of our Hankel data by the pseudo inverse of these multiplication of these duplication matrices. So motivated by the use of uh, multi-way delay embedding, we propose a block Hankel approach whereby in, when we talk about block Hankel matrices, we mean a large matrix which is made up of sub Hankel matrices. And this um, large matrix can be reshaped into either fourth or that tensor, whereby each patch or each block is also a Hankel data. And we, depending on the size of our data, we can generate up to sixth order or seventh order tensor using this block Hankel approach. Um, one with a, a Hankel matrix is a matrix that has um, the entries being the same on the skewed diagonal. So that is what we mean by a Hankel matrix. So block in block Hankelization, we have um, a, block, a large matrix which is made up of blocks of other Hankel matrices. Then in, uh, um, after trying for block Hankelization, we also experimented for using convolutions as a Hankelization step. And in, in the convolutions, we replace the filters of, of the convolution with the duplication matrices. And it has also been found out that this operation also generates a Hankel matrix, which can be refolded or shaped into several higher, higher order tenses. The inverse Hankelization using convolution is just a, the transpose convolutions, whereby the filters are also replaced by um, this duplication matrices. All right, so one of the motivation for using this Hankelization is because we'll be using um, tensor networks, which is tensor train and tensor ring, which um, works well for higher, for higher order data. And in tensor train decomposition, just um, decomposes a data or tensor into N core tensors whereby these core tensors have some um, sequential contractions within them. In, in tensor train, however, the, f um, the f first and the last core tensors are special in the case that they are matrices. And tensor ring um, decomposition just, is just a generalization of the tensor train algorithm. And so in our method, we adopt tensor ring decomposition. However, tensor train can also be used in our method. So in, in summary, for the tensor um, ring method exploiting sparsity, we have um, an, an input data or an input tensor with some parts missing. And then this input uh, data is Hankelized or Hankel folded into a higher, higher <laughs> tensor, and then we perform tensor ring completion with um, sparse um, representation where the core tensors are decomposed or initialized with a tensor ring, and then we update these core tensors using some dictionary learning approach. The, the result is then 
um, we, we perform inverse Hankel operation and then we generate our output. The optimization function for our approach is as follows, where we add some regularization function, which is the um, sparse coefficient, such that our um, core tensors is made up of um, multiplication of dictionary times some sparse matrix, which is the coefficient matrix. And our, our, in our algorithm, we solve using alternating method of multipliers techniques where our um, optimization function here is transformed into an, the fragmented Lagrangian function where our the error fitting operation is replaced by um, this symbol. And B is a, a matrix representing the Lagrangian multiplier and lambda is a penalty operator. We solve the sub um, problems for our um, ADMM algorithm using um, this set of uh, equations which are solved iteratively. And then we compare the result or our algorithm using different um, Hankelization approaches. We did not only try for delay embedding, we also tried for patch base and also performed some zigzag scanning which also results in um, Hankel approach. And we, from all these Hankelization approaches, we realized that the convolution um, approach as a preprocessing step resulted in higher um, PSNR and SSIN in comparison with the other Hankel approaches. Then we compared, we also performed experiments on MRI images with 40% um, and 60% um, random missing data, where the top um, row represents our original unknown um, data or image. The middle row represents our degraded or incomplete image which we have. And then the, um, the third row represents our reconstructed image, which is close as possible to the original. And we show the PSNR of different um, frames of, the, of that particular MRI image. So in the last frame, we show the visual reconstruction and the PSNR of the frames. We also try or compare different ranks for our algorithm and compare with some other proposed states of the art uh, algorithms for tensor um, completion. And from the results, we can see that if with different ranks or regardless of the rank, our algorithm um, had the lowest um, relative squared error. In terms of computational time also, our algorithm had the lowest computational time in comparison with other tensor um, completion algorithms. Then in, in this um, figure, we show the reconstruction result for EG signals with different missing ratios. So with a missing ratio of 10 to 40 randomly missing data, we show that uh, we can see that our result outperforms the other tensor completion algorithms. In, in the right hand side, we have um, a figure showing reconstruction of EEG signals. Um, the normalized relative mean squared error of the reconstruction of EEG signals with some of the channels removed. So we did not only try for randomly missing um, data, we also tried EEG data whereby we removed some channels and then we performed reconstruction and our proposed rate, um, method show, um, has the lowest relative mean squared error in, comp in comparison with these selected algorithms. In order to also show the effectiveness of our, of our method with other images, not only for MRI, we compared or we performed experiments using other natural images and using a, a very popular um, benchmark for for image com um, completion, the linear image, we um, performed an experiment whereby we 
um, removed randomly some parts of the, of the data and also structurally um, punched holes in the data such that, and then we, we performed reconstruction. And then from the results, we can see that our proposed algorithm outperforms other tensor, um, re, um, tensor completion algorithm. Other forms of experiments were, were also conducted where we, we have 90% or we, the image was scratched. And from the results, we can see that our method outperforms these, me these re um, other algorithms in most of the cases. So in, in summary, for our first method, we propose a new and efficient tensor completion algorithm for recovering data tensors with random or structurally missing entries. And the main idea is uh, to provide a prior hankalization approach on the incomplete tensors to generate a higher order tensor, which has some shift invariant structure. And this structure allows for um, better um, um, completion. We also exploit the use of dictionary learning techniques on the core tensor. And our algorithm is able to exhibit higher um, com performance in comparison with many other tensor decomposition and tensor completion algorithm in terms of computation cost and relative squared error or, or in the error. In our second, in, in the second method, I would be talking about, we're talking about cross tensor approximation, exploiting smoothness. So the motivation or the idea is to propose a fast computation for low rank tensor approximation. And because most deterministic approaches are prohibitive for computing low rankness, especially when there are many iterations or the underlying data that is being used is very large. And so we propose a tensor CUR framework for tensor completion, whereby we incorporate both TACA CUR and then Tubal CUR approximations. We introduce a smooth variant of this approach whereby our selected fibers are smoothing before we perform the um, low rank um, approximation. So the idea is taken from um, metric CUR, which is a very popular and very effective approach for sampling and um, low rank approximation, whereby we select actual actual um, rows and columns of data, and then we try to approximate a smaller um, approximation whereby our um, matrix U is a, the intersection of these rows and columns. So U is calculated as the pseudo inverse of this intersection um, matrix. So using this idea, we try to generalize to the, the tensor case. However, generalizing the CUR, metric CUR to tensor case is not obvious. So we take advantage of this property for the matrix case and then generalize it to the tensor case whereby we, um, our W is actually a, a sampling of indices of the actual um, uh, mode of the data. And then we, we compute for you using um, a generalization of the um, property for the matrix case and then generalize it to the tensor case. And then our approximated data is, uh, our, our data is approximated using Taka decomposition where A1, A2, A3 are the corresponding fibers of the um, selected indices for, for W. So we, after generating our A1, A2, A3, we can approximate for the data tensor using Taka decomposition. All right, so an alternative approach, apart from using Taka CUR, we also um, experimented or tried for different approaches for sampling or using um, matrix approximation for the tensor case, which uses um, frontal slice and tube selection. This approach actually is motivated by the fact that some data, um, some data such as hyperspectral images or medical image analysis, it's assumed that one of the modes is qualitatively different. So we sample frontal slices and then tubes which correspond to such mode such that our U is um, calculated 
um, in in such manner where the D1 um, D, D1 and D2 are some scaling diagonal matrices that corresponds to the frontal slices and the tubes that we selected. And so our U is, our U is approximated from the pseudo inverse of, of this um, W. In the same manner, we also try for um, sampling using um, lateral and then horizontal slices, whereby we sample some slices and some some slices both lateral and horizontal using some probability distribution and the small u or the quarter the u is just the intersection of of the um the horizontal and then the, the lateral slices so they become that so u becomes the tubes that is used and then we uh, perform tubal products for uh, the reconstruction of our, or the approximation of our method. Then we to show the efficiency of this um, cross tensor approximation, we apply it to tensor completion um, tax, whereby we have the optimization or the problem for tensor or, um, completion is solved used using alternating least squares method iteratively where we solve for C, we, we solve for X by fixing C, and this L is actually our low rank CUR approximation. And then we apply a maximum operation because we are using the tensor completion. So we fix, um, also we fix X and solve for C iteratively until our reconstruction is done. So in, in general, our, CUR cross tensor approximation takes a form of a multi-stage um, completion whereby after each um, approximation, our data is um, fed into a nest. So we don't only perform the approximation in one stage, but we perform the approximation in several stages until our result or our goal is is met and we can see here from the result that even with data with structurally missing pixels the CUR is able to reconstruct after 500 iterations with a PSNR of 31 which provides a good construction. So I talked about the fact that in CUR algorithm we provided a smooth variant whereby we perform smoothening on the fibers before we perform the algorithm. So we tried or we experimented for different smoothening algorithms and realized that the moving average performs better for most of this um, Saka approximation or tubal approximation. So in the rest of the experiments, we used the moving average method for our smoothing. And we can see here that if Without the smoothening, the Taka CUR achieves a 16 dB PSNR. But if we um, perform smoothening of the fibers before um, we perform the, um, the, the, the approximation, the PSNR increases. So therefore, the smoothing variant of the Taka approach provides better results than the non-smooth one. The same can be said for tubal CUR. The, smooth variant provides better reconstruction in most cases than the non-smooth um, tubal CUR. So in, in our experiments, we performed or we tried for different missing ratio. And then we can see here that with just a few number of iterations, the method is able to achieve an appreciable PSNR result. The same for SSIM. So we try for um, different missing ratios from 50% to 90%. And with just 10, not 10 um, iterations of about 10, our PSNR can get up to almost 30, 30 dB. So in terms of computational time, we also compared our algorithm to other um, popular or state-of-the-art tensor completion algorithms. And then we can see here that the CUR algorithms have um, lower running time than some of these tensor ring algorithms. We can see that SPC and tensor ring ALS, all in, in all of these cases, our 
um, CUR algorithms um, generator is able to achieve lower running time. And we also have a reconstruction of MRI with structurally missing data. And our CUR algorithm is able to perform reconstruction to an appreciable level with higher PSNR of 32 and also um, 29 for different structurally missing data. Then we try the algorithm for um, two video data. And in the same way, our the, the different types of CUR algorithms achieve lower running time even for video data than the other tens with tensor ring weighted optimization or tensor ring ALS or, or the SPC algorithm. The CUR algorithms have um, lower running time in terms of compared to the other tensor ring optimization or tensor ring methods. So in summary, for method two, we proposed a framework for TACA CUR approximation for the tax of tensor completion. And then we provide a smooth variant of this suggested CUR completion was also proposed. And we experimentally showed that the smooth algorithms are able to tackle this problem of reconstruction with higher missing ratios. And our algorithm has low computational complexity because of the utilization of the CUR approximation. And extensive simulations support um, the effectiveness and the performance of this algorithm. So my third method will be, I'll be looking at low tuba rank approximation for MRI motion artifacts. Um, it's a very common thing with MRI images because during the acquisition pro um, process, patients move or because the time of um, acquiring this data takes too long, they only sample part of the MRI data in order not to take a long time for um, the acquisition. So most of these methods are prone to certain at, um, noise or certain movement, which um, applies to the data. So the motivation is that we use a truncated TSVD, to pro which provides a, um, the best low rank approximation in the least square sense. And this method is able to preserve global correlation of the data because we use the data in the tensor form. And the algorithm is relatively simple for reconstructing data with motion artifacts. Generally, uh, the optimization function is found, uh, is written or constructed in, in, in this manner where um, the epsilon is some noise level and F and S is the Fourier sampling operator and then S is the sensitivity maps that are applied to the images after acquiring them to provide an initial estimation. And then this um, X represents each vector in the MRI or of the data. So we stack the vectors together to form a matrix. And then the free, um, the free operator and the sampling max is multiplied to generate um, some matrix A and then we reformulate our um, problem in, in, in such manner whereby we have um, the new, we minimize the nuclear norm of each of the, the data. And then we perform, we transform the data into higher order using Hankel, um, Hankelization operation. Then we, um, one main method that we use in this method is the um, tensor SVD and the truncated tensor SVD. So tensor SVD just decomposes data into three tensors where the middle tensor is an F diagonal tensor. So, and we, we use the tensor products to perform the approximation. And generally, tensor, a tensor product of two um, tensors is just um, to uh, multiplication of the circulant matrix by some unfolding of the, of the second um, tensor Y. And the circulant matrix can be seen in, in such manner, whereby we realize that the tensor product can also be written in the Fourier domain so that the, um, the tensor operation becomes a multiplication operation. And then we have C, X, Y, and C are just block diagonal matrices. And this is the algorithm for tensor product. So we implement or we use this 
operation in our optimization of the, the data or of our reconstruction. So in general, we have data or MRI data in the case space of Fourier domain, and then we sample each of them and then perform um, Hankel operation. Then we apply our low rank reconstruction using um, the TSVD algorithm. When we achieve our reconstruction, we just perform an inverse Hankel operation to generate our reconstructed MRI data. So after we show the performance of our method and compare it with other um, compressed sensing algorithms that have been popular, and we can see yet visually that our method is able to compare with other compressed sensing algorithms. So in this case, we have just an undersampled MRI data without the fully sampled data, and we try to perform a reconstruction of this undersampled or acquired MRI with motion artifact. Also, we try the algorithm for image denoising and compare the image denoising to the deep image prior algorithm. Deep image prior is a, it's a very good and popular deep learning algorithm that um, just does not need training or does not train. The, it just takes an image as, as an optimization or as a prior. And from the reconstruction, we can see that our method is able to outperform the deep image prior. In this case, for the, the denoising experiment, we perform the reconstruction or the denoising in, in patches or, or in blocks. So we take each block and we perform the denoising and then we put in parallel, we perform the reconstruction. Qualitatively, we also compare our method or perform experiments on some cardiac perfusion MRI data with 40% uh, missing and compare it with some popular or state-of-the-art compressed sensing um, methods. And we can see that our, in terms of PSNR and root mean squared error, our method is also able to compare effectively with these um, popular um, compressed sensing methods. So in summary for our third method, we propose a framework for reconstructing MRI data with motion artifacts using tensor SVD decomposition. And our experimental results show the efficiency and performance of our algorithm for many applications in terms of compressed sensing and denoising. And then we show that our algorithm is comparable to other motion artifact reconstruction methods. Finally, to conclude, in this presentation, we have presented three methods or algorithms, and the first method is an efficient tensor um, completion algorithm for recovering data with random and also structured missing pixels. And then we use a prior hankelization step for incomplete data and also impose opacity on our core tensors. Secondly, we provided a framework for tensor CUR approximation and then used a smooth variant of this CUR approximation for tensor completion. Then we lastly, we propose an algorithm or a method for reconstructing MRI data with motion artifacts using tensor SVT algorithm and experimentally show the efficiency and performance of our methods or applications for compressed sensing and for denoising. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for your uh, very good presentation. Now we have uh, the section of our defense devoted to questions from the jury members. So I propose to start from jury members who are abroad. Uh, Professor Yipen Liu, uh, are you with us? Do you hear me? I think we shall maybe we shall start with Professor. Oh yeah. Is, yeah. So he, he it seems that he's he is here. Yes, I can see that they're reconnecting. Okay. So uh, I see that Hui Bin Zhao here. Uh, Professor Kibin uh, Zhao, are you here? Are you? Do you hear me? 
Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's good. So, uh, uh, could you please uh, turn on your camera? Thank you. So, could you please uh, uh, do, do, do you have any questions? Do you have any comments uh, to Miami? Yeah, yes, I, I I do have some questions. Okay. Uh, yeah. First of all, I, yeah, uh, thank you, my my my, for nice presentation about thesis. I have several questions and uh, about your presentation. Uh, my first question is about. Uh, I think first work, sparsity constraints you applied to you uh, tensor ring decomposition. So I wonder why why do you need sparsity for tensor ring, uh, and also why why you must choose tensor ring not tensor train or other uh, tensor networks for your task. This is my first question. Okay, thank you very much, um, Professor. So, to answer your question, in most tensor completion algorithms, um, apply the constraint, the low rank constraints. However, in most data applications, when we have missing data, just the low rank assumption does not work because data such as MRI can have structurally missing um, slices or, or missing rules. And the sparsity, um, constraints um, allow for, for reconstruction of this uh, method efficiently. So we impose um, sparsity constraints in order to allow for, for e efficient reconstruction to, to just not use low rank, but to add some other constraints that will allow us to perform efficient reconstruction. Uh, actually, we tried the method for, um, for tensor train and tensor train, um, the method has already been um, proposed before so motivated by by that uh, method we also generalize it to the tensor ring case um, i i am aware of um, sparse circuit models that are used for for compressed sensing however we have not experimented for for cpd um, yet so sparsity constraints allows us to perform reconstruction um, efficiently because Tensor ring completion is not unique, so it acts, acts as a way of allowing for efficient reconstruction. Thank you. Okay, I understand. So sparsity is mainly for the structure missing and the efficiency. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah. So I have next question about hankalization. Uh, I wonder why why hand colonization is so important in your, in your task for remote uh, noise, uh, and also second about compare with you uh, you could us work you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. what what's new in your hand colonization? Okay, so the prior hand colonization step firstly allows us to transform our data if it is third order or a matrix into higher order tensor that allows us to get more pixels or more data to work with. And it has also been shown that a hankalization approach also adds um, and helps in the structural missing data problem because of the shift invariant structure or uh, property that the hankalization um, has. So it also adds to our performance. Um, we. As, as I already shown, we experimented for um, column and row hankalization and in our proposed method, we proposed a block hankle approach whereby we um, have sub hankle matrices that um, also has an, a shift invariant or the hankle property. So in our, our proposed method is the block hankle method as compared to um, your Cortez case that um, used just um, delay embeddings of the use the delay embed is taking into consideration just the rows or the columns for hankalization. Mm. Yeah, you use block hankalization compared with yes. you could ask like yes. so uh, so what's the advantage using block hankalization to compare you could so, ask? Yeah, so it, be, be, with our block hankalization we can see that from the reconstruction we compared with MDT and our algorithm has, if, um, compared to MDT, provides better reconstruction with the tensor ring method instead of the, the Taka app, app, approximation that Yokota used. 
So for better reconstruction, yes. Yeah, so, so I understand. So general the performance is better. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So next question is about smoothing uh, constraints. You also you apply it to rows, column, or tube in cross approximation method. Mm -hmm. So I, I I wonder why why uh, smoothness are uh, important for cross approximation algorithm okay thank you very much so in in the CUR um, approach because we, we we perform sampling of the original data the smoothening um, algorithm or uh, um, act as a sort of interpolation because smoothening the moving average interplay so smoothening adds to our approx um, low rank approximation whereby it performs or make some interpolation of, of the data, which um, helps in filling out the missing um, pixels that our incomplete data has. So we perform smoothening on the fibers before we um, do the reconstruction, and this has not been um, done before. And this is the idea that we chose to uh, um, perform the smoothening on the fibers before we do the low rank reconstruction to add to help in the interpolation or the reconstruction of the missing data that our sitting complete um, data has. Mm. Okay, I understand that this is some kind of novelty using uh, smoothness for cross approximation. Uh, yeah, but I would like to understand well what's the advantage of such novelty. So like, the, the what kind of situation you can handle by such new novelty? So yeah, for the CUR algorithm, we can see that one of our main motivation is to try to reconstruct data with structural missing um, information. So this smoothening of the rows mm -hmm. and the columns allows us to achieve um, such reconstruction. So it allows for better results in terms of um, um, the, the missing data. Mm. Okay, I understand. So uh, also the good performance we, you can obtain by using such. Okay, so next question is about the tube, tube, TSVD. You use the tube low rank uh, to do the tensor completion. Uh, so I, I want to know what, what's the advantage and what's the disadvantage when we apply TSVD uh, compared to other like tensor ring or tensor chain not using Fourier transformation. Okay, so it thank you very much. So it hmm. has been proved that um, tensor um, TSVD provides um, best approximation, actually truncated TSVD provides um, best approximation in the least squared sense. So it is a very simple approach. One of the motivation is that it's a very simple approach and it also provides um, a best approximation for our um, reconstruction. The disadvantage is that in terms of, um, in comparison with some methods such as HOSVD, when it comes to um, compression, it achieves lower compression in terms, in, in, some, in some instances, it, it achieves um, lower compression in comparison to the TSVD. That is what I, I, I know so far, that in terms of compression ratio, sometimes in, in, in certain cases, it achieves lower um, compression ratio. Mm. Or the reconstruction is not as good in in some instances. Okay, so in practice, like when we have some task to remove noise from EG FMR, when when we need to choose TSVD, is that uh, uh, um, associated with data type? Like uh, when we use EG TSVD is better, or F FMR TSVD must be used. Can, do you have any uh, uh, some such kind of uh, like clue or to give in to the user? 
Okay, so in, in terms of MRI and, and other data, I, I believe that the CSVD helps in, in better approximation or provides some best approximation for, for such data. However, I have not tried for other um, data types such as maybe hyperspectral or maybe fMRI. So, but I believe that the TSVD would um, provide some the best approximation in in for for such data. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Another question about uh, algorithm for tensor rain and tensor chain. I think the basic uh, fundamental algorithm is using ALS, alternative least, uh, least square. So in your work, I, I think you developed several new algorithms. So I wonder, uh, how do you think about ALS algorithm for tensor ring and tensor chain? Okay, so um, thank you. ALS uh, algorithm is, is a very popular and the efficient algorithm for optimization or reconstructing data. In terms of um, tensor ring, in ALS, we, after um, estimating the, the core tensors, we fix all the core tensors except one and update solving it in the least distance. So we fix all core tensors and then we update for one iteratively until our reconstruction or our approximation is done. The same for um, um, tensor um, tensor train. So we have we estimate core tensors and then we fix all and then solve iteratively um, in the least square sense. So we fix all and then approximate or solve for for, for each of them. And ALS is a um, a block um, kind of a block coordinate descent algorithm, and it's also able to provide um, linear convergence for most approximation tasks. So it is. Uh, an efficient and uh, a good method for approximation or approximating um, tensor um, decomposition uh, algorithms. Okay, thank you for your comments on AIS algorithm. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. As I, uh, I, these are all my questions from my side. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, now I, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Professor Weeping Liu. Uh, are you here? Are you with us? Hello, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, okay. we can hear you very well. So, uh, to do any questions, uh, would you like to ask Miami something? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, my first question is that, uh, uh, why do you choose uh, TSVD for MRI reconstruction? Why not for other, for example, uh, tensor chain or something like this? Okay, so, um, thank you very much. So. We adopted TSVD for, for, for MRI because we realized that it provides a, a good approximation or best approximation in the least square sense for most data. And because we are working with MRI, we decided to adopt the TSVD for, for this data because the MRI data is a very complex um, data and um, we experimented for different methods and um, Realize that TSVD helps or provides some best approximation um, for us. We have not tried for other data um, yet. And my second question is that uh, so in some of your experiments, uh, you show uh, you compared uh, with uh, the image reconstruction by DIP. As uh, as also as a lower rank tensor method, but do you consider if you can combine these two method just into one and if it, uh, and see if they, there may be better performance? How do you think about this? Okay. Um, thank you very much. So I have actually um, we have not tried it yet, but I believe that it can. 
um, help in, um, in performance because I have actually come across a paper that incorporates um, DIP and the non-negative metrics factorization. So this um, approach you, you suggested would be a good research or direction that we can, we can take because we have been able to show that TSVD um, helps in or generate better performance and deep image prior is a very um, good um, deep learning algorithm that um, does not need training. So we, I, I believe that combining um, this method is, could be a, a good research direction that we can experiment and, and try on. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, while we are working uh, is about a cross approximation. So compare with uh, some classical random something. How do um, uh, um, okay? How do you think about the cross approximation sort of advantage compared with, uh, for example, the previously random sampling or some some other others? Thank you very much. So the idea for the CUR is to sample um, natural or uh, actual. Um, rows and columns or fibers in, in this case for our work. Some in comparison with some other randomization of, uh, algorithms. Um, in terms of computational time, the CUR provides is, is faster, but some deterministic randomized algorithms have higher complexities. That is why we did not um, try for that one, but CUR algorithm is faster than some um, deterministic uh, methods or some or randomization using um, projection matrices, which is not actually sampling of the actual or, um, data. So in CUR, we tried to use the actual fibers of the data, which helps in um, reconstructing the data um, faster in, in, in comparison with other deterministic approaches such as max volume or yeah in some of these methods okay okay thank you i have no more questions thank you okay so um any other questions from your side professor Do you hear me? Yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, so, so from my side, I have uh, uh, several questions. F first question is, uh, in your first chapter, you consider tensor chain. In the second chapter, you consider the tax CUR or TSVD CUR. And in the uh, third part, you consider TSVD. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes. Okay. In the, in, the, in the third part, you consider TSVD. So, is some criteria for us to choose next which tensor decomposition we should choose? This, this is the first question. Okay. Um. Thank you very much. So, um, the um, choice of of these methods um depends mostly on the application or or the data to be used. We can realize that in the first methods, we used um, MRI um, data with structural missing um, pixels. So the application is to reconstruct data with structural missing pixels. And our first method proposed um, helps us to solve this um, case. The, C, um, the issue with the first method is that if we perform hankalization, sometimes it can be computationally um, expensive depending on the Hankel size. So the CUR algorithm um, in, in this case can provide a faster uh, method for reconstruct um, for reconstruction because in, in that method, even without performing prior Hankelization, our method achieves um, good, good results. And for TSVD, um, there, you can also apply it to, to each of these cases, but we decided to apply it for MRI with motion artifacts as a form of um, um, 
reconstruction that uses the data in its natural tensor um, form. So that is why it depends on the, the, the application or the type of missing um, data that would inform whether we can use either the first method, the second, or the third in terms of computational time. Maybe the CUR provides the, the faster um, um, algorithm or approximation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, so my second question is, in the uh, sparsity in the tensor, tensor ring decomposition, you consider some transform. So which transform you consider and uh, are there some other possibility to, to choose the transform? And why you consider the transform sparsity instead of the original sparsity? Um, sorry, please, can you come again? Trans in, in okay, okay, so in, in the sparsity of the tensor ring decomposition, you consider some transform. So first is which transform you consider and are there some other possibility to, to consider for the transform? So um, some alternative transform can be considered for this case? Uh, okay, um, thank you very much. So in, in our first method, we impose the sparsity constraints, you mean on our core tensors. And the motivation is that we realize that um, for most tensor algorithms, they impose the sparsity on the whole data, on the original data. and in in this case, if the data is, is higher order, it takes time computationally, it is expensive. Another method is that this sparsity constraint allows us for better reconstruction because just in imposing um, lower rankness on, on the data, on the core tensors, does not um, allow for efficient reconstruction. So we impose sparsity on, on the core tensors because in general, tensor ring decomposition is, is not unique. It needs some form of um, regularization and this capacity allows for that. Um, and also motivated by some methods that used this approach for tensor train. Um, tensor train, we decided to generalize it to tensor um, ring um, core tensors. So that is why we, uh, but actually it would be also good to investigate for other um, constraints in, in the future we can try for maybe um, orthogonality and, and other um, constraints. But so far, we have not um, applied this concept to our tensoring decomposition. Oh, OK, so, so my last question is, so here you mainly consider the no rank constraint to, to tackle the you pose the problem. So have you tried to combine the no rank constraint and some other prior, for example, uh, local, local similarity or long local similarity to, to tackle this problem? Um, thank you. Um, we, we are st still, so far we have not experimented for other um, constraints or other um, method yet, but it would be a, a good um, approach or direction that um, we can take for um, this method, we can try for, for these methods, but we have not tried for these other um, constraints yet. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's all my question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, thank you, dear professors, for your questions. Now let me ask uh, some of my colleagues uh, uh, from Russia. Uh, so first, I'd like to ask Professor Maxim Rahuba. Maxim, are you with us? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to uh, some. Aha! Uh -huh. Now I think it will work. One second. Yeah. Can you can you see me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can see you and we hear you well. So, okay. Maxim, uh, what are your questions? Yeah, so actually some of the questions I had have already been answered by Mami, but I still have a few more. So uh, Mami, is it possible to go back uh, to slide number 32? Yes, um, Alina, please oh. can you help me? Slide number 32. 32, I guess, yeah. <clears throat>
I probably should, should not have done this. A lot of technical difficulties. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. so, uh, uh, is it actually, so the lines that I see on these plots, are they uh, actually for the same rank values? Because I, I think maybe the performance can depend, uh, like the number of missing points and the rank that you use, uh, may some, uh, interplay uh, with each other. So could you comment on this? Yeah, um, thank you. Yes, for, for this figure, yes, the values are for the same rank. We, we chose a rank of um, 70 by 70 by, a uh, rank of 70, 70, and 3. Uh, how, however, for, for this method, the, the choice of, of the rank does not really um, affect the, the reconstruction. The only issue is that if the missing ratio is too high, increasing the number of ranks can sometimes um, affect or reduce the, the performance. But in general, the algorithm is robust to um, rank selection. So yeah, for this, met for this figure, the same rank was used in all of the missing um, scenarios. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is actually good, right, that your method is robust. Uh, like, and you can choose different rank values and still get uh, good results. Okay. Um, yeah. The second question, uh, it, it, it was asked in a sense, but, uh, I, I still want to clarify it a little bit. So regarding the sparsity constraints, uh, that you use for the tensorine course, and did you try to compare it with some other naive type? Uh, regularizations like L2 regularization instead of L1 regularization, for example. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, thank you. Um, no, we, we we have not yet tried for for other um, regularize regularization. We just use this um, constraint on the on the core tenses and updates using dictionary learning and and sparse coding and um, approach. Mm -hmm. and, and do you actually get um, um, uh, speed ups uh, for your method, uh, like compared to naive uh, ILS without any regularization? So do, do you have any benefits in uh, speed of the method, time performance? Yeah, um, yes, thank you, because um, in our approach, the per iteration, we just perform um, uh, metrics, metrics, multiplication of the of the core tensors in in terms of computational time with other hankalization, it is it's it is faster than um, some of these um, tensor ring ALS and tensor ring um, weighted optimization approaches because um, the complexity is 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 lower in terms of computation if we do not add the Hankel approach to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, then probably no more questions from us, my side. Uh, thank you very much. And, and do I need to comment that uh, I do not have, uh, like, uh, that I'm satisfied with the revision of the previous? Thank you. Okay, so uh, now I'd like to ask Professor Alexander Bernstein. So, uh, Professor, uh, do, do you have any questions, comments? Based on the answer on the papers, uh, question. I have no questions now. Thank you. Thank you. I but see. Yeah, I'm actually, ready. the 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 discussion is already quite detailed. I agree that uh, Miami answered a lot of uh, uh, addressed a lot of issues. So uh, now I have uh, several questions, comments myself. Uh, so you. Uh, uh, tested your methods for tensor completion based on MRI data with corruptions which are artificially introduced, right? Yes, please. But uh, did you have any examples of data with not artificial corruptions? Okay. Have you yeah. tested on such data? Do you have so, any examples of this? So in the, in our, in the um, previous last slide, we tried for denoising with um, um, Noisy MRI data that I, I um, but this noisy data is it uh, real noise or it is again artificially introduced in the MRI data? Um, I I believe it is um, 
real noise because we I, I just took it from um, online. So, however, we also tried we simulated for um, Poisson noise for denoising and compared the algorithm with um, deep image prior and some some auto encoding um, method. But we have not because it is very difficult to. Um, but how do you? How do you, for such data, for such uh, data you take from the internet and you think that it's noisy with real uh, noise, how do you check the quality? Because do you have any ground truth for that? So that is one of the, the challenges in, with this data is that we do not have um, ground truth data. That is why we try to artificially simulate um, um, the data with some missing um, entries that is comparable to existing or real life applications and then we try to um, show or, or like evaluate the performance so we believe that in terms of if we have a real life MRI data it should be able to also um, generate a better or some performance and um, that is comparable to um, that is appreciable um, to most of that, most of these um, completion algorithms also obtain. I see. Okay. Uh, and so you mentioned deep image prior. So did any? Did you do any comparison with deep image prior? Yes, please. We we compared with deep image prior in the revised. Um, um, ah, thesis. yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And concerning artifacts uh, for MRI, uh, uh, do you have any, so these artifacts, uh, are they labeled manually? Because if they are labeled manually, this can be considered as a ground truth, right? Mm -hmm. So did you check your methods on uh, data sets with uh, manually labeled artifacts? Um, not, no, not, we just, um, introduce some artifacts into the, the, the data here and then we I see. show the Yeah, they, this could be, of course, the future research and that uh, I, I would say that it, it's very important to, uh, to find such data and uh, for sure I know that for EEG there exist data sets with uh, manually labeled artifacts. Uh, so that if you uh, detect these artifacts, you have uh, ground truth labeling uh, to check the quality of uh, me your methods. Uh, so for sure this should be done in the future. Uh, well, that's it from my side. So we don't have any, I don't have any comments. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so now we... Uh, should discuss uh, questions from general audience in Zoom. Uh, uh, are there any questions, comments, remarks from a general audience? Yes, please. Could you please use the microphone, whichever is closer to you? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Mommy, for your nice presentation. Just, I have one simple question. I have a lot of experience working with images and videos, but not any EEG signal. So my question is, as far as I got, you had some experimental for EEG signals, right? Yes. So you, have you tried, uh, you, know, you know, different kind of window sizes, and do you have any, uh, you know, point to say here which kind of window sizes uh, are useful, was the best, gave you the best result? This is my question. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank um, you. To um, address um, what Professor Bonaya asked before, yeah, I, we also tried for EEG data with semi-simulated um, artifact, and in the thesis we compared the uh, reconstruction with the um, ground truth. So actually, we have one experiment where we have uh, an EEG data that has been corrupted with some noise, and then we tried to perform the the reconstruction and compare it with the original um, ground truth. Um, thank you, um, Salman. So we, I tried for about two of or uh, two or three different um, window sizes because we had different um, EEG data. I had about three EEG data sets, and for a uh, data of 
um, 19 by five, um, nine, the samples of ni 19 channels by 500 and um, 5,600 um, samples. We reshape it into third order tensor and then we apply some um, window sizes of about 20 by 30 by, by five. And so we tried for, for different um, window sizes. However, um, if we increase the, um, the window sizes too large, the data would become extremely large and computationally it will become um, very hard for us to perform the, the reconstruction. So we did try for different um, window sizes about, yeah, but we just chose the one that we could provided us the best results and also could, could work with for on our yeah, computers. Thank you, Mommy. Okay, uh, so are there any other questions from the general audience? I can't see any questions online, so if maybe someone else... Okay, uh, is Andrzej, Professor Chekhovsky is here? Yes, I am here. I, I Sorry, I apologize. I cannot switch camera. Probably the reason is that my connection is poor. But do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well and everybody as well. So uh, do you have any comments, words? For... Yeah, I, I, I would like to give a few comments if, if it's okay. So I, I would like to say that it was great pleasure and honor for me to work with Miss Mami Asante. She was always very polite, very kind, and she, she tried to follow my advices and suggestion. But I would like to emphasize that she has ability to work alone. And also she, she, she was happy to work in a team. So she collaborated with some Russian PhD student and also postdoc and other professor, not only me. So this is good point. Uh, um, she has already family, small daughter, but although she has family and as a mother, she should devote a lot of time to, 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 her, to her child. She, al she always was strongly motivated and worked extremely hard. Uh, and uh, she showed also a, some kind of curiosity. So she was happy to learn the new things, which was completely new for her. So I hope that she will be successful in her own country as um, because she wants to work at university as researcher and maybe future very near future assistant professor. So I hope that she will be will be successful in her country and she not forget Skoltech and friends in Skoltech. So anyway, uh, I think I also I think that her uh, regarding her publication recently she achieved five publication four is in journal and Q1 journal with quite good um, uh, reputation or impact factor. So generally, I, I am happy with her work. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Chikoski. <laughs> so uh, that's it, guys. So we should have closed deliberation. Okay, so dear colleagues uh, who are uh, now uh, in uh, Zoom, so could you please uh, open your video? Uh, or, or turn on your video so that we we can announce the our decision to Miami and make a joint photo. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, dear Miami, we uh, discussed with other reviewers and we decided to accept the, the thesis as it is without any revisions. So, my congratulations for your uh, defense. Uh, let's uh, congratulate Miami. Thank you very much, Aud. I would like to thank my supervisor, Professor Chukoski, um, for his guidance and his patience. And I would like to thank Professor Bunaya for always being there whenever I need help and I go to him, he provides. And then Professor Bernstein, thank you very much for, for this. And I would like to thank all the jury members um, who accepted to be my, my jury and also read my thesis. And I'm grateful to uh, my lab members um, um, Salman and all the other um, people who helped me to publish my papers and all my friends and my family. I'd like to thank my, my husband also. Thank you very much.